All right, I'm going to make a, a quilt square. Actually, it's going to be for a pillow for my sister. And I'm again, I'm going to be doing it in the hoop. And this is slightly different from, again, each one's a little bit different than from the, the last. And the first thing that I had it so off was on a piece of stabilizer, the... I suppose you would call it a template. It's just a sewing of all the lines. And then I used, I took that stabilizer and cut it out to make, uh, let me see where it is, to make templates for the fabric. This is what the finished square looks like. And because this time I'm not using lots of small squares or long pieces, it's actually L-shaped pieces. Um, I decided to use a template, make a template to cut it out so that I would know how big. Of course, these, these two are actually about the same. I only needed one, but I cut both. And then I cut out pieces of fabric in this L-shape that is larger. The pieces left I'm going to use for these corners. Um, so... I'm not going to cut, do the template again because I've already done that. What I am going to do now is I'm going to start with the first. You can put a collar in the center as I did with this one and I'm going to do that again. So that's going to be the first collar here. And so I'm just going to lay that down. And I'm just using a neutral color thread. It really doesn't matter what color thread I use for the first, for putting these down because they're all going to get co covered by a satin stitch at the end. So I can pretty much use the same neutral color and put everything down. And then at the end change to another color to sew things off. So let's... Now I don't have any stabilizer underneath this hoop and that's because I'm going to be putting batting afterwards but mostly it's because all I'm doing now are just plain straight stitches. There's nothing here that's going to put stress on the fabric that I have to worry about distortion at this point. It's all just plain straight stitches. If it weren't, I would use a stabilizer. Stabilizers, as I say, are expensive. <laughs> About as ex probably not as expensive as some of the Vesna fabrics, but certainly more expensive than some of these quilting fabrics. So I save stabilizer when I can. And I, you, as I say, you don't really need it for this. So once that's sewn down, I'm just going to do it as you've seen me done before, is come in and cut the excess fabric away using applique scissors. And I'm cutting as close, I'm trying to cut pretty close. The, the satin stitch that covers this is I made pretty thick, but even still. You don't, you don't want it sticking out if you're doing it this way. All right, so that's that's where the the words for this pillow go. All right, now the next one is wants to do this, and I'm going to let it mark the spot for me. So that I lay it down where it's supposed to go. sew that again. So I'm just going to lay this down on top 
of the, the space and make sure that it's covering all the lines. Let's put this out. The thread's in the way. Come on. And now it's going to sew it again. take the hoop out and cut this out and I probably will do that because that's the next thing to do is to trim this off and it trims easier if I can move the hoop around now I'll keep, I'll keep this end or or this end or both because I'm not sure which one I'll use yet it's just the right fabric to put here so If you take your time and trim these neatly, you can do a satin stitch that's narrower than the one that I'm I'm going to be using, but I'm not I'm not that I'm not that worried about it. All right, so now it's going to want to it's going to put down the markings. For the, for the other side. This time I'm going to put this fabric down here. I probably should turn on the thread cutting thing because I have to cut the thread anyway. Alright, so I wanted to lay over these outline threads. If I can't see them, then I know I'm good.
know what that piece is going to be. And I know where it is because it matches this piece here. So I'm just, I'm, instead of sewing the outline, I'm just going to go ahead and just sew the piece down. going to sew the piece down. This very edge here I can trim when I take it out of the hoop. It's hard to get scissors in there right now. I could with small scissors, but this is really the edge of the, the block. Yeah, I can get in here with small scissors if I want to. Okay, so, so now we have all the fabrics now. Now we have to do the, the, right, the other embroidery that goes on top of these fabrics. And the first thing that wants to sew, so I don't need this anymore. And I still don't have, this is the first embroidery here. And yes, I could put um, batting underneath it right now, but I'm not going to. I'm going to wait to the next, the next color when I do the quilting. This is just going to put a tiny little heart here and again it's not it's not going to put a lot of stress on the fabric. So I know that I can sew this off without distortion or without needing stabilizer at this point. There's two layers of hat fabric here and one of the, the Actually, it's almost three layers of fabric there. Half of one, half of this one, all of this one, all of the white one. So it should be pretty stable. Now I want to get rid of this thread. I like using batik fabric for quilting because it doesn't have a right or wrong side. You can use either side turns up can can be turned up. And um, later I'll do another type of quilt called an origami quilt square, and you'll see where that's an advantage having both sides. Okay, so there's the little heart. Now it wants to do the quilting. So for the quilting, I want, I want the, I want batting behind it. What I don't, I if and if I were doing this for, not for a pillow, but if I was doing this for a, uh, a throw, or a quilt, I would put the stabilizer, I, not the stabilizer, I would put the um, backing fabric on it as well. 
But I'm, I'm making this as a pillow. Later I'm going to make, probably make a throw too, maybe for, for Christmas to go with this. But for now, all I really want is, a, is um, this because there'll be, there'll be other backing on the other side of the pillow. So I'm not going to waste fabric right here. So I'm putting a piece of batting over top of the whole area that I can see where it'll fit. And again, I'm going to float this underneath the, the hoop. So I put it on, make sure it's flat, and then connect the hoop. And it just rides on the table underneath the fabric. And I like to feel it to make sure that, I, that in flipping it over, I didn't get any creases or anything. You can usually feel those things. It doesn't. And so... Um, now I'm using white thread, so I need to get rid of this red thread. White, I'm, I'm quilting. It's a white, it's a white background. I could quilt it with any color. Um, if I wanted to see the quilting, but I don't want the quilting to be too noticeable. This on this, so I'm going to be using white. things here. I don't want to get caught in threads. Fuzzies. Alright, so white thread. And I'm using a, a motif fill that I had. Um, it's not really a quilting stitch, but I, I like this and it, it quilts pretty fast. quilting. We'll do the same on this side. I don't, I, I don't like it hitting that. Alright, that should be okay.
and now it's quilted. And so I'm done with the white. <coughs> oh, it wants to put the border. I forgot about that. I should leave, should leave. I'll leave it with the white for that. I, I mean, you can live without the border, but it really does help you when you're putting the squares together to have a border. So, I mean, I already have a border on all the areas except right this corner and the other corner up there, but I'll let it sew everything. So now it wants to put the satin stitches around everything, and that's fine. So this is mostly green and burgundy. I think I'm going to use burgundy. Um, purple. This purple would go. Let's do the purple. Uh, I think I'm doing the words with purple. So no, let's. Let's go with the first idea, which was burgundy. No, it's still green. Uh, green or brown. I should have my colors picked out. What about this one? I think I like that. of a dark green but as opposed to as opposed to this one. that one better. That was my first, my first thought.
has nice You get some fraying like here at the edge from the edge of that fabric and it just pulls away and if it doesn't pull away that you can just this tip of your, your scissors will take it off I'm going to be putting this quilt square and the other ones. Uh, there are six different ones about talking about your sister. Is this, and then there's some other quilt squares to go in between them if you want. I'm going to put them all together with the, the free quilt, the, the free designs. Uh, I can't leave those on the website because the website will not let me leave files that are anything except the PDF. Um, so you'll have to email, if you wanted the designs, you'd have to email me with your um, machine, embroidery machine format, uh, and I'll send you a zip file with all of the designs in it. And my, my email is be down below in the description but it's ihmdaughters at yahoo.com and in future as I get other designs I'll continue to send them to you maybe once a year if you're still on my mailing list My, this, I told my sister I would give her this for her birthday. She decided she wanted a different saying on each side of the pillows, depending upon her mood that day. So she picked out what she wanted, and um, I gave her I gave her options, and she I have like six different, as I say, six different ones. And she picked out the two she wanted, and um, so this is this is the other one. It says, 
you don't understand how a woman could both love her sister dearly and want to wring her neck at the same time, then you are probably an only child. I haven't cut the threads on this. away and leave the machine unattended. That's the best way to have your machine break. It always does something when you're not around. And it runs out of bobbin thread, thread breaks, but it can also do even something, the thread can also catch on something and you could get some serious damage. So. I never leave it. I, even if I do leave the room, I'm within earshot because I can tell by the noise if there's if it's doing something it shouldn't. all the threads. There's a few here I've missed. So, it's a nice I don't think I would make quilts at all if I couldn't use it, do it with the machine. And I, I very seldom make quilts. I think I've made three quilts in my life. And the first first two of those were hand done. Before I ever got a machine. dark green. I could do it in black, but dark green is... 
I think, I think the dark green will show up pretty well. This is going to take about 20 minutes, so I'm not going to film it all. I'll just film it when it finishes. Okay, so here's the finished, finished design, finished quilt block. Um, so.